I'm going to share with you a process that works. It doesn't have to be complicated to create a business plan. It doesn't have to be complicated to get what you want out of your life. My background, I was in the banking industry for 12 years and then went into the real estate industry and helped a real estate agent create his business from scratch. The year before I came on board, he'd sold 55 houses. After a year I'd been with him, I simply applied what I'd learned before. That's why I'm going to share with you today. You have so much knowledge inside of you. Sometimes it's just a matter of applying what it is you already have. You really are like a diamond in the rough. So I applied some of the basic skills that I knew and processes in an office. And after one full year, we had closed 115 transactions. I continued to apply different processes and systems and hiring the right team members because it's team members that can provide you with leverage. It can, team members that can lift you up and help take care of some of the tasks that you don't necessarily need to do. Going into the third year, we closed 222 houses. We continued to grow and got some national, international exposure. And I just kept doing what I knew to be right. I followed what I learned in the banking industry, create a plan, put the right people in place, lead with integrity. And the following year, we'd close 300 and some transactions. Now people say, how do you do that? How does that happen? Well, it starts with a plan. It starts with a vision. It starts with, how am I going to get over this obstacle, around this obstacle? There's always a way, my friends. And today, it's my intention to share with you as much information as possible as I can. But what is it that leaders need to know regarding their decision making. Identify revenue streams. Sometimes there can be opportunities right before us. And remember, the value of being involved in a wonderful networking group like this is opportunities happen. You see, money does not come from people. Money comes from opportunities. Opportunities come from knowing people, and then the money comes from the opportunities. So if we always embrace how we can build relationships with integrity, we will always have sufficient income for whatever we need. Vision. Think back of when you started your business. If you could start your business today, you could start your business over, what would be one thing you'd do differently? We have some handouts on your table. I'm going to encourage you, take advantage of those handouts. You will remember more. You will gain more in your business by writing down even words that jump out to you. Pay attention to those words because they're speaking to you. So again, think. If you were starting your business over today, what would be one thing you would do? And the first thing that jumps into your mind, write that down. What is your vision? What do you want for your business? What would you like for yourself? When you gain clarity on your vision, next comes your mission. And you, get, and you can determine exactly what mission you are going to set about to do with yourselves and anybody else around you. So leading in your business, you lead with knowledge. Going back to that story and many other stories I could share with you today, you lead your business with knowledge. The first thing is knowing who you are. You see, John knew who he was. He understood what his purpose in life was, or he had an idea. Maybe he wasn't even 100% certain. He was scratching the surface. He knew who he was. He knew what his strengths were. He realized he needed some assistance. He couldn't do this all by himself. Know your team. It's very important in business to understand your team. What makes them feel awesome? How can we help them along in their lives? So know your team. You will always get more um, customers. You will gain better relationships with all of your, your business associates if your team are operating in sync with your vision and mission. But what happens after three months, five months, six months? Do you go back and stop and look at your plan to say, what did I want to achieve the last few months? How many people overall really stop and evaluate their plan? You see, it's very important for business owners 
and on the personal side too, to take stock, to find out where am I? How am I measuring up? So when I say know your business, that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to take you through a process where you're going to get to really understand your business and you will have a template that you can follow. Know yourself, know your team, and then know your business. The work values is something that's internal. That's your internal motivator. See an iceberg. We see the top of the iceberg. And people will go, whoa, that's a big iceberg. Make no mistake. The part that's underneath the water is larger than what you see on the surface. Those are, in, are our internal motivators. When we can really understand our internal motivators and also understand the internal motivators of our team members, can you imagine what happens? The synergy that it creates. Planning for performance. Okay, on your notebooks or on your handouts that we have for you. We've got vision, mission, accomplishments. Here's the next thing for you to write down. What have you accomplished so far this year? You know how many times we focus on the things we don't get done? What happens when we are focusing on the things we don't get done? We're not getting things done. We're not getting things done. But really what ends up is that negative self-talk. We want to lift ourselves up so we can lift up the lives of others. What have you got accomplished in your business so far this year? I look at your business like a diamond. In order to find a perfect one carat diamond, it takes a million mining, a million diamonds to find that one perfect one. In order to find a two carat diamond, it takes five million diamonds to find it. All the rest of them are used for industrial use. When we think about the process of a diamond, you know, we see them in the store and they're shiny and they're beautiful. What did it take from that stone in the ground to what we see on our fingers today? So think of your business. You are always working at it. Just like I'm going to go over the eight facets of your, of your business, there's eight facets of getting a diamond to where it needs to be so that someone will actually buy it. But everybody has got so much potential in yourself personally and in your business that sometimes you overlook it. There are a lot of people who get distracted trying this new thing and that new thing and that new thing and that new thing. Know yourself, know your business, and set out with a plan. Planning for performance and profit. Why performance? Does an athlete achieve any medals without really getting out there and performing? Do they achieve without working and having a plan and having a coach to help them come alongside of them? Or a mentor to help them? So the first thing about any business, item number one, know your numbers. Know your numbers. What is your financial snapshot? Under the financial snapshot on your piece of paper, write these words. Revenue producing activities. If you are plugged in to revenue producing activities, they will help you reach your financial goals. Many individuals are not clear on what are my revenue producing activities. Well, give us a call after. We'll help you go through that process and determine it. The next part into marketing is going to bring some reality to what works for you that helps generate revenue. So again, be clear on your financial snapshot. Marketing. What is it that marketing really does? It spreads the word about who you are. It spreads the word about what you have to offer. In your marketing business plan, it's important to have clarity on what are you doing? Many times, and any of the people who've had business for a long time, they'll spend money here and they'll spend money there. This is what you want to do. Write down all the areas you spend money on marketing. The two largest areas that cost you money in your business, but also provide you the most leverage, is marketing and your team. And you need to know your numbers and know what works for you. It's really, really important for the success of your business. 
So this is what I'm going to encourage you to do. Write down your list. When you get back, if you don't have a buddy to help you do this, then call us. We'll, we'll help you. This is what we do in our company. And you go through and determine exactly how much you're spending in those areas, and then you take a look at your clients, the clients you've closed from this past year. Where did those clients come from? And I'm kind of a bottom line girl too because I'm from the banking background. If it's not generating revenue, stop it. Just stop it. Because you've got the time and energy and finances to put money in other areas. And it doesn't mean that maybe you won't come back to that particular um, group or get gadget or advertising venue. The key thing is analyzing your business. Every day it's about doing your best, your personal best in business and personally. Write down these words. What does the business need? What does your business need? Be clear, articulate. If you're going to go on vacation to Hawaii, you're not going to pack the same clothes as if you're going to Canada in, in the wintertime. Treat your business the same way. What does the business need? So on your action plan today, under staff or team, what's one action item you're going to do for your business? If you have more than one team member, how do they fit together? Do you do something that allows them to learn about each other? Using, using a profile, uh, but sharing the information, making sure that your team members know your vision. In the story of John sharing his vision with Samuel and Will, they're all team members. See, everybody just plays a different role in a company. So for your team members, do they plug in like nice pieces of the puzzle? Whether they're independent contractors, virtual assistants, or full-time employees. You know, doing a team building exercise, which we do across the nation, has, has brought about not only a shift in focus for people personally, but also in the business, because it's how they all interrelate. Many times when you're happy in business, you'll be happy in your personal life and vice versa. So everything I'm sharing with you today, take it and say, how can I apply to this personally? The next area of your business, your office. Where do you work from? Where do you perform the largest percentage of your activities that's related to your work? So ask yourself, do I have enough space? Am I leasing it? Should I own it? This is the time to do that evaluation. What's working for me in my office? What's not working for me? Everybody needs a special space. There's, I had the pleasure of meeting Mike Vance. Many, many years ago, he created the uh, Creative Thinking Association of America. You, some of you have heard it. He did a lot of work with Walt Disney, a lot of work. And we were at some sessions, some private sessions with him, and he said, check out your environment. What is your environment saying to you? When you go back, look at your, whether it's a desk, whether it's your whole office, what is your environment saying to you? Is it conducive to you? Does it energize you? Or when you go in there, do you feel like burdened, like, oh my gosh, I've got so much paper, I've got all this stuff? Pay close attention. Now, write down, what are you going to do about your office? What would be one thing you do regarding your office space? There are some individuals who have had their offices feng shui, and they have seen great growth. Some say, well, I've had it feng shui, and I just feel better. Well, that's good, because guess what? Your thoughts create your, the images in your mind, so if you can think of your office, if you think of your office, what's the first thing that comes into your mind? Linda, what about you? Uh, lots of stuff to do. Lots of stuff to do. So when that thought comes into your mind, generally you get an image of what your office looks like. And it, it can either be a real positive feeling or a negative feeling. Pay attention to that, because your feelings or your emotion is what drives your motivation. Now your motivation gets the gears going. It gets things into action. It puts things into action, doesn't it? And what brings about results in our life? Actions. 
So remember, what am I thinking about? And when that screen comes across your mind, that's the image you have. And it's going to, it's going to create um, a sense within you. It's like everything that we're talking about in your business. It's having clarity and having a plan and incorporating a system. You know, there's things I call the, the four C's. It's having clarity, communicating it, being committed to it, and then consistency. Doing it over and over again. And if you repeat something more than two or, three, two or three times, you do have a system. So look at your sales system. We talked earlier about your revenue producing activities. If those activities aren't bringing you revenue, stop them. If those activities are bringing you revenue, but you think, gosh, if we just tweak something, it could be a little bit better. What's your sales system? You've got your marketing which will generate some business. You've got your networking groups. You've got your past clients, your referrals. But when they come to you, what happens next? Write that down. What happens next under your sales system? And if you don't have a clearly defined plan, now's the time to put one into place. Every large corporation has got a process that they follow when it comes to sales. So what's working for you? This is a constant question I'll always ask. What's working for you as far as your sales systems? Whether you're selling products or services. Do you have a clearly defined sales system? Do you need some help with it? People go, gosh, Linda, I, ha I have all these leads and I just I have a hard time closing them. Okay, what's an indication? Do they think they may need a little training? We need to ship them all up and send them to Alice so she can train them in sales. But there's a lot of things you can do. How I Raised Myself from Failure to Success in Selling by Frank Betker. One of the best little books. It's phenomenal. There's other books out there that can help you fine tune your sales skills. I have clients who still who contract me who've been in business 20, 23 years. Because guess what? They want to sharpen their pencil when it comes to their business and they want an outside source to kind of give them that extra lift or, or sit down and review it with them. Well, do the same thing for you in your business. Search for another way to make your sales system in your business better. Technology. Think of, write down, what technology are you using? Write it down. Do you have, and, and, and this sounds pretty basic, but you will all find I always go back to the basics. When I was in commercial lending with the bank, I had to analyze financial statements of companies. And guess what? It always goes back to the basics. And you almost say, oh, Linda, well, this sounds kind of corny, writing down, yeah, I have a headset. Yeah, I have this. Yes, I have this. Trust me, it's not. Because you have spent your hard-earned dollar buying those things. And it's going to come, there's going to be a time where you have to replace them. You've got to step up if you're going to take your business to the next level. So itemize. What technology do you have in your office? What is it that you want to embrace? Write down one thing that you haven't done that you'd like to do. Right now. Write down one thing under the technology part. Even if you were thinking about it but you haven't done that you'd like to do. When you walk out of here today, the best gift you can give yourself is having action items that you can put into place in your business. You've spent the time here today and come here and had a beautiful breakfast, but you've taken time out of your day. Like Michael Gerber, it encourages everyone. You're working on your business right now. Make the most of it. Get really clear on, gosh, what am I hearing? How can I even take that to the next level?